couple of minutes left, but I think that um, I saw to hear about the stroke, incidentally. Yes, it's it was. Suddenly, the whole side of her body went, and uh, she can still she can still make signals. Mm. And I mean, it's obviously we ought to talk about the end of your life, really. In later life, one often follows very quickly on the heels of the other. No, well, whatever, whatever you like, really. But um, I really right. should give her a so, call. Uh, yes, Sir Arthur, you can't pick up a phone now, of course. So they have to put it through loudspeakers into the ward. Mm. Sir Arthur, you're quite clearly, to anyone who could see you, nearing the end of your life. Who will receive the greater part of your fortune? I've um, made it very clear that uh, all my assets go to uh, a, a trust. I've often thought of giving all my money away, but um, then I've often <laughs> thought again. <laughs> I've, just, I've just had a, a rather entertaining thought of you... Uh, dying, your your last breath coming out of your mouth. It, I, how, how would it, you like that to happen? Well, <laughs> Gets you sort of collapse on the floor somewhere in public, or you find, you find <laughs> the, the, the prospect of my uh, dying uh, very amusing. Well, well, <laughs> well, I don't. Uh, yes, yes, I do. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, mm. yes. Uh, what about what about your own death? Do you, how do you view I'm that? Just, I'm just equal good humour. Well, no, I wouldn't look. I wouldn't look as good. Um, Lying on the, my back like a tortoise, sort of burbling fluids of some kind. Um, well, let's talk about prisons. Your report on prisons is published tomorrow. What's it going to say? I think the key finding is that criminals are people who should not be treated with kid gloves. They are the dregs. And dregs should be kept at the bottom of the barrel, otherwise the wine will never get to the surface. Is this in any way linked with your experience of your own father, who, as we know, was a profound criminal? My father had criminal tendencies, which he exercised to the full. It was a, a learning experience to be a child in my father's household, or whichever household he, he put me in. He was a very firm man, and he felt that the best education I could possibly have was to be put in prison and raised by hardened murderers. We were woken at dawn by the sound of hanging. We had to sleep naked because the, the warders feared that we might um, do ourselves injuries, stabbing ourselves with buttons and uh, things like that. And we used to draw straws about which clothes we got into because there was only uh, 50 pairs of uh, trousers and there were 400 inmates. How did you as a four-year-old fare amongst grown men in this scrabble for clothes? I tended uh, not to get any clothes. All four-year-olds are not as big as 20-year-olds. Uh, so if I was lucky, I, I used to be put into somebody's pocket or stuffed down somebody's uh, waistband. There was one particularly thin prisoner who I got to know as Uncle Edward. And he used to stuff me down his uh, trousers every now and then and take me out to the turnip fields and um, jiggle me up and down. Did you keep in touch with him after you left? Uh, no. He died in the field. And I was left there for, for several days because the policy in those days was if people died at work, it was taken to be dumb insolence. And so they were left as an example to the other prisoners. Did you hold this against your father at all? We never spoke about it. I must say that at the time I, I resented uh, being in prison for crimes I had not committed and uh, forced into the company of, um, at best, uh, rough diamonds, to be frank. Because I became prematurely old as a four-year-old. I was I had the body of a four-year-old and the, the mind of, a, of an 80-year-old. You became a heavy smoker at the age of four. Yes, and this led to me falling out with Uncle Edward because at four I was getting through 20 cigarettes a day in his trousers. What contacts did you have with the outside world when you were in prison? I used to see planes going over sometimes. What did you think? I thought I'd like to be in one of those. I really would. Anything in the air, I, I just long for that. 
you... The war came as a big relief. Well, yes, you were conscripted, weren't you? At the age of, was it? Six. I joined the, uh, the Foreign Legion and I was stationed just outside of Tunis with a, a bunch of uh, Belgians. Now, you were fighting alongside Rex Harrison at one point. Yes, Rex was awfully brave. He could have been an actor, you know, but he preferred the army, he preferred to be side by side with uh, legionnaires singing in French. Could he sing? Rex? Mm. He never sing, and this is another sign of his of his courage. That later in life, when he, most people would have considered themselves past it, let alone able to sing, he he started to sing and got money for it. When did you re-establish contact with your father? Then, when my father learnt that I had uh, become buddies with Rex Harrison, he wrote me a letter asking if he could meet Rex. And I, of course, said I would try and arrange it. And I did. He, he met Rex. I wasn't there, of course. He didn't want to meet me. He said he'd already met me and hadn't liked what he'd seen. Now, when he met your father, they fought. They had a, a skirmish. Because my father suggested to Rex that they collaborate on a musical for Esther Williams. And my father thought if he could get her and Sonia Henny together, they could combine underwater and ice. So Esther would be under the ice and Sonia on top of the ice. So you'd have this combination of a, a woman frozen underwater looking up through the ice, up uh, Sonia Henny's uh, little skirt. And uh, Rex thought it was a wonderful idea and uh, took it to Louis B. Mayer. And that's the last my father heard of it. Is this in any way associated with the episode in which you were forced to stand on a frozen lake by your father? He suggested I stand in the middle of uh, Lake Ontario during a particularly bleak winter in Canada. And I stood there, and I was waiting for a whistle or something, some sort of signal that I could uh, go, go to the shore, but uh, the whistle never came. How long were you there for? about a year and a quarter. Anyway, I, 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 I really don't like uh, talking about this sort of thing because it, it was all a long time ago and my memory of it is, is very detailed. I can remember every single pine needle on that trudge through the forest towards Toronto. I hope you won't mind if I hold you to it because the next time we want to interview you'll probably be dead. Apart from the perilous cold, what other dangers did you have to fight off? Well, I, I, possibly the most dangerous uh, element of the stay, as I call it, were the bears. Because, strictly speaking, they're not vegetarians. And uh, it was hard at times to fob them off. But you succeeded and furthermore, in time, became respected by them. I became loved by the bears, yes. It was when an old granny bear had come round one evening. She was on her her last legs and um, wheezing and bits of fur were falling out. She was really in a very bad way. And I nestled up to her, uh, gave her, a, I think it was a fish finger I had in my um, hamper, and uh, she gasped with pleasure and uh, fell to the ice and expired. And uh, it was then that I skinned her and put her fur on me and uh, basically masqueraded as a bear for, for nine months. And how did you end up leaving the ice? I decided to walk off. How do you, um, do you think, during that time, fallen in love with frozen water? There was a certain bleak beauty about the place uh, which appealed to me. And even now, years and years later, I, in the middle of the night, I'll get up and go to the fridge, get out an ice cube and just uh, perch on it, just to bring back those memories, like that Proust used to dip his biscuits in his tea. Right. Um, sorry it took a bit longer this oh, evening. No, that's, that's all right. I must say... You're... Fairly persistent in that, that particular line of questioning. Yes, I like to. Uh, it is, I really feel I've been, been grilled.
Uh, oh, I'm sorry about that. It was no, just, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. I like to, I like to meet somebody who uh, treats me very badly. 